Hello, my name is Drake Beery. I am currently a PhD graduate student at Florida State University under Dr. Ken Hansen at the time of this recording. I want to thank you for checking out this quick video abstract on our perspective in the Journal of ACS Applied Materials and Interfaces, looking at harnessing sunlight via molecular photon upconversion in a solar cell in collaboration with Dr. Tim Schmidt of the University of New South Wales. Throughout this perspective, we look at the progress to date and what improvements are needed to realize photocurrents through upconversion relevant for real-world applications. For additional details, check out the full paper online. Okay, so what is photon upconversion and why do we care about it in terms of solar energy conversion? To begin, let's talk about solar energy conversion and look at this plot that shows the energy conversion efficiency versus the band gap energy of the absorber material. You can see commercial single junction silicon solar cells with a 1.1 band gap or EV band gap have a maximum theoretical efficiency of around 33%, known as the Shockley Quesser limit. A large percentage of the efficiency losses are due to the transmission of the subband gap photons shown here in red. One way to capture and harness those lower energy photons is through photon upconversion, which takes two lower energy photons and converts them to one higher energy excited state, which can be harnessed in a solar cell. And when coupled to a standard solar cell, maximum theoretical efficiencies greater than 43% could be achieved. One popular means to accomplish photon upconversion is through triplet-triplet annihilation, or TTAUC. Typically, this involves molecular sensitizer and annihilator pairs, and begins with the photo excitation of the sensitizer to the singlet excited state with the lower energy light. This, in this case, a green photon. In most molecular systems, the photo excited sensitizer will undergo intersystem crossing to the triplet state, where it can triplet energy transfer to an acceptor or annihilator molecule, resulting in an annihilator triplet excited state, while the sensitizer returns to the ground state. Now, when two annihilators in the triplet excited state are in proximity, they can undergo triplet triplet annihilation, resulting in one annihilator in the singlet excited state while the other returns to the ground state. The higher energy singlet excited state can either relax to the ground state emitting the upconverted photon or charge separation at an interface can be done to extract the upconverted energy. TTAUC has been utilized in solar energy conversion through two primary strategies. First, by optically coupling an upconversion filter composed of sensitizer annihilator pairs capable of TTAUC with a standard solar cell as shown in figure A. This scheme upconverts the lower energy light, transmitted uh, light, and redirects the upconverted higher energy photons back towards the solar cell to be converted to electricity. The second strategy, uh, second scheme, electronically couples TTAUC via charge separation at an interface from the upconverted state. Both strategies have shown promise and have their respective advantages, but you will see that the electronically coupled examples have thus far resulted in a greater performance enhancement to standard solar cells for various reasons outlined in the paper. And so pictured here is the optically coupled scheme complete with a reflector to redirect the isotropic upconverted emission back towards the solar cell along with the various events and quantum yields involved in the process. The isotropic emission and diffusion limitation are some of the drawbacks to the optically coupled upconversion scheme. Next, electronically coupled schemes have consisted of three strategies, namely heterogeneous co-deposition and a metal ion linked, shown in figures A, B, and C respectively. First, the heterogeneous scheme consists of sensitizer molecules dissolved in the surrounding electrolyte solution of the solar cell while the annihilator is tethered to the charge separation interface to extract charge from the upconverted state. This strategy is limited by the diffusion of the sensitizer into proximity of the uh, surface bound annihilator molecules. And the second strategy co-deposits both sensitizer and annihilator molecules uh, directly on the surface to overcome that diffusion limitation of the heterogeneous strategy. 
However, this limits the overall concentration or amount of both the sensitizer and annihilator molecules in the system. The final strategy developed was through metal ion linked multilayer assemblies on the surface overcoming both the diffusion limitations of the heterogeneous strategy and allowing for a greater concentration or surface coverage of sensitizer annihilator pairs compared to the co-deposition strategy. One final example of harnessing TTAUC in a solar cell discussed was done in organic photovoltaics or OPVs in 2017 that doped sensitizers into the annihilator layer. This example did facilitate TTAUC, but was, uh, the resulting photocurrent was relatively low compared to the previous examples. While there are some disadvantages to this strategy and much room for improvement, this architecture has some notable advantages as well, both of which are outlined in the paper. The progression in the upconverted photocurrent density, or JUC, produced to date under one sun or AM1.5 solar irradiance is summarized in this figure, with each number in brackets representing the reference number from the paper. The gray spheres represent the optically coupled schemes, while the red spheres represent the electronically coupled. The two regions shaded in blue represent the device relevance and device impact thresholds. Between 0.1 and 1 milliamp per centimeter squared is considered the photocurrent necessary to be of any significance to current solar cell devices and overcome power conversion efficiency uncertainties. While photocurrents greater than 1 milliamp per centimeter squared is defined as the device impact threshold or enough photocurrent to improve solar cell power conversion efficiencies by greater than 1% or by 1 milliamp per centimeter squared. Although the latter threshold has yet to be breached, an uptrend is observed throughout the years since um, to the first example in 2012 with the best performing device to date being an electronically coupled metal ion linked trilayer integrated TTAUC solar cell that achieved roughly 0.3 milliamps per centimeter squared in JUC. With that said, further improvements outlined in the perspective are necessary to reach and surpass the device impact threshold of JUC's greater than one milliamp per centimeter squared. In summary, TTAUC is a promising strategy to increase solar cell efficiencies and potentially surpass the shockley quesser limit by overcoming transmission losses. Much progress has been achieved on this front since the first example in 2012, while recently the electronically coupled schemes have breached the device relevance threshold, but no TTAUC solar cell has yet to reach photocurrents high enough to impact solar, uh, current solar cell performance of any significance. With that said, many improvements are needed to reach JUCs of greater than 1 milliamp per centimeter squared and increase current solar cell technology's power conversion efficiencies by at least 1%. Finally, I'd like to thank both Dr. Tim Schmidt and my advisor, Dr. Ken Hansen, their funding agencies, the Australian Research Council, the National Science Foundation, and Florida State University. You can find this publication and many more at our website link below or through the ACS website. And feel free to follow us on our social media at HansenFSU if you like pretty science photos. And thank you all for watching.